Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today is actually gonna be a little bit more of a chatty video. I got this huge drawer, not huge, <laughs> this drawer thing from an acquaintance a while ago with a lot of sewing notions in it. See if I can lift it. <sighs> okay, yeah, this. I kind of went through it, but it's not so organized and that's what I want to do today. While I do this, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about how I started my brand, why I started my brand. I even made notes. I'm going to dump all these buttons out. And then I'm going to make each little container its own color. I think that might be easiest. It'll be like my own little button store, you know? <laughs> That'll be fun. Oh, I found a lavender thread and you may have noticed I'm missing a button. I have it in my pocket because it came off this morning and I knew I wanted to film organizing this, but this is literally the exact color. Okay, I need to sew on my button later. How I started my brand. So it was probably, what year was it? 2021 oh yeah it was 2021 in like january february that's when i officially bought the domain name like eleanorsteva.com and that was the very first thing i did now if we backtrack a little bit the brand i was working for i worked for this small independent designer in toronto best job ever best boss ever like absolutely loved it she would always say i i used to make clothes for myself. You know, Elle, you could make five of these or 10 of these and you could just sell them. I worked there for a few years. So after a while, I kind of started to get the idea that, you know what, maybe it is something that like one day I would want to do. I wasn't so eager to do it because I didn't know what that would look like. But that planted the seed as like, you know what, this could be an option. Working at that job, I realized that you don't need to be this massive fashion house to have a brand. Like, she was one person with her partner, and they built this whole thing together. She was like so passionate about it. She loved working. And that was like the best model for me to see is like, okay, if you're passionate enough and you're good at what you do, you can make it work. <laughs> she planted the seed like, okay, maybe just buy the domain name and then at least you have it. And at one point you can build your brand. I think from the moment I bought the domain name to launching my first designs, I totally rushed it. I think it was only like three to four months and I worked from a made to order model. So I made the design, shot it, released it. And then when like someone ordered a size small, then I would make the garment and send it out. So the turnaround was probably like, I think I gave two weeks and I did that for a year and a bit. I was not loving the made to order model because I would get an order. I was like, yes, I got an order. And then right away I was like, oh, but now I have to make it. And I hated that situation. It's just like not for me. I think the buttons are gonna take me a long time because this is the most like tedious process because I still have a whole jar of them. To be completely honest, I definitely cried and sewed multiple times. Like I'd be sewing and be like, I don't like this. I was doing it to myself. Like it was all in my own control, but I wasn't sure like how I could change it. I just felt like I needed to just shut it down and then rethink about it because I definitely rushed into it. I knew I was moving to the Netherlands, so that was kind of my timeline. I was like, okay, then I have a reason to shut down my brand and really think about it. Like, what do I want to do? So I moved in August 2022. And then I gave myself the space and the permission to think about it more. To be like, is this really what I want to do? Do I want to have my own brand? Do I want to work in fashion? If so, like, what do I really want it to be? Bought a sewing machine a couple months after I moved because I missed sewing. I still love to sew for myself. And I took about a year to rethink it. That I wanted to use thrifted materials, that I wanted to like slow it down a lot more. I did not want to do the made to order model. I wanted to just make the items and then sell it and I wanted to keep it like super limited quantities and that's what I ended up with. That's what you see now and it's what I enjoy the most. I have not cried and sewed since I restarted it in the Netherlands. <laughs> I organized all the buttons. This is my green and red, gold, brown, whites, creams. I had a lot of black ones, so I have two black containers. They're all a mix of size, and I notice a lot of them are like one, one-offs, two-offs. Uh, these are my huge buttons. <laughs> like, look, look how big it is. Face for scale. And I actually have one spare one, which is nice. And this is all my, like, I have so many of these. I didn't want to put them 
in the white container or my happy face buttons. This is all organized as well. So now I'm gonna have a button drawer. I'll put it all in the top drawer. Since she had it all nicely organized before, I know it fits. Gold, white, brown, empty one for future buttons. Oh, this looks nice. Okay, next drawer. What is this? Oh, patch, patches. Okay, that's like useful, I guess. Tracing paper, also useful. Oh yeah, these are my new shears, but they really need a sharpen. I need to figure out where I can get them sharpened. I really don't know. This is an amazing magazine, which can go with my other books. Okay, now we're getting into all the like ribbons, trim. So I think this will also need some boxes, which she already has. I also have my own bias and ribbons in these little bins that I already had. I think I might actually try and keep this contained in here. I have so many scissors now. One, two, eight, nine, ten pairs of scissors. Why do I have ten? How did that happen? Wait, well, I will say five of them came from this. So I only had five before. Where were we? Oh yeah, rebranding, starting the Netherlands. Honestly, starting a business in another country that is not your language, not easy. And legally, everything has to be in Dutch. So I just asked my Dutch friend a lot to like translate things for me. Also Google Translate. Everything is definitely a learning curve for sure. I'm kind of glad that I was naive to it because now it's just like, you just accept it. And then when it gets hard, sometimes I just cry for a second and then I figure it out. If I fail, like whatever, at least I tried. Where do I put trim? I have wavy trim. This is all my elastic in different sizes, my ribbons and all my bias binding. Let's see what fits. That fits pretty good. Now for thread, this thing of thread. So I guess I could create layers of it. There was a spool unraveling while I pull them out. <laughs> Ooh, I even have a tracing wheel. Nice. After it's organized, I'm going to show you the final result because this is very satisfying. Why I started YouTube. Well, actually, I'm just side note, I'm just organizing all my thread by color and then I think I'm gonna group them that way because to me, that makes the most sense. Let's go and we'll see actually which ones fit in this little tray because, ooh, that one fit. Ooh, that one fit again. Okay, this is fun. This is like satisfying, it fits. Oh, that fits too. But back to YouTube, why I started. I watch a lot of YouTube. I am a big YouTube consumer. I watch a lot of house content, love house content, but also some fashion, not as much as you would think actually. And I watch a lot of illustrators and the illustrators who are full-time YouTubers. And then they share the whole in behind the scenes of their illustration business. And that's kind of what got me thinking. I was trying to find a creator who shared all the behind the scenes of a fashion brand and I could not find anyone like of course there's some I'm not the first one to do it there's a lot of creators who sew on YouTube but they make something for themselves and I wanted to see someone who thinks about like how is this garment being produced I wanted someone to basically do what I'm doing and I wanted to watch that and no one was doing that so I thought okay something is missing and maybe it can be me who fills that so that's why I started Okay, I'm gonna quickly just organize this and then I'll come back to you because I need to focus. I'm getting distracted when I'm like trying to talk but also organize in my head. <laughs> so I'll come back to you in one second. all the threads organized by color and I started just organizing this by color. I'm gonna see if I can find the others that fit because apparently it's a very particular fit and it's not any spool of thread. How it's going, it is going, I would say. I do see like there's progression and I'm pretty determined to keep it going. I work on it every waking hour that I can. Uh, if I'm not working at my actual job, I'm most likely working on my brand and I love it. I really hope this is gonna stay organized but I have a feeling it's not going to. Also like when am I ever gonna use all these tiny spools? This one I'm gonna put on the bottom of the drawer and then this one will go on top. Oh, forgot another one, gray. 
There you go. The final reveal. First, we have all the buttons. It's all organized by color. Then all the elastics and bias and ribbon. There's also like some space here. I don't know what for yet, but space to grow. Then of course, last but not least, all the thread. The other tray is underneath this one. Now you can see it's kind of organized by color. I'm not gonna touch this much. Feels so good to organize all that. I've been wanting to do it for a few weeks now. But now you know a little bit more behind the brand, why I started, how I started, and how we got to where we are now. And I hope that if you're thinking of a business that you should just start. It just takes very first step. You just have to start. It's always the hardest part. Everyone says that, but it is kind of true. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Oh, I have to sew my button back on. Perfect.